Good morning to all of you. In our last alternative English class, we had begun to look at the story The Verger by William Somerset Maugham. I had proceeded up to a certain point in this chapter and beyond the point that I had discussed in the previous class, the story takes a very interesting turn. But before I go there, I want to discuss a few more things with you uh, from the part that I have done so that you can understand this story and get the full entertainment out of this story. Uh, and, and you know one of the aspects of a short story or what shall I say one of the aspects of literature itself or one of the functions of literature is to entertain. So, if you cannot derive the joy out of it then it is the story or the, or the piece of literature has not served its full purpose. So, today we shall rather look at the joyous aspects of these stories, the aspects that will entertain you. We will try to understand, get deeper into the skin of the character before we proceed any further. So, the name of the story is the verger. As I told you, the verger means the caretaker of a church. Now, which church did he serve? He, charged, he served the church called Saint Peter's. Okay, Saint Peter's. And where is Saint Peter's? Where is the, in Saint Peter's? Saint Peter's is in Neville Square, Neville Square in London. All right. So, if somebody asks you the name of the church, the name of the church is Saint Peter's, and it is located in Neville Square in the city of London. There is something special about Saint Peter's Church. What is special about Saint Peter's Church? In this church, the parishioners, the worshippers who go to this church are elite and aristocratic people. All right. So, the people who go to Saint Peter's Church are elite people, aristocratic people. All right. In this church is a verger whose name is, as you know, Edward Albert Foreman. I will just write Foreman here, his name, Foreman. He is the verger of St. Peter's Church. St. Peter's Church is a church where elite people go to worship. High class people, top class people, they go there to worship. And the verger of that church, Mr. Foreman, has one weakness. What is the weakness? His weakness is that he is illiterate. He does not know how to read and write. Now, a few things about our Mr. Foreman. He is a very interesting character. You have to understand them, understand as you read. Uh, you, it is not just enough to read the lines, you have to read between the lines. What is the meaning of read between the lines? To read between the lines means, when you read a line, you understand what the line says. When you read between the lines, you try to get what has not been said, right? So, you get the deeper meaning. So, I will now tell you, if you read between the lines, what you will learn about Edward Albert Foreman, your chief protagonist of this story. He is a very, very interesting character. Now, Foreman, at the beginning of the story, you will see that Foreman who has served this church for a lot many years. Uh, 16 years to be precise, he has served this church and uh, during all these years, we have seen that Edward Albert Foreman was a very careful person, he is a very careful person, the book uses the word meticulous, and that is a more precise word here, he is a very meticulous person, man a careful person, he is very careful about what he does, especially you and how do you know that he is very careful? You can know that he is very careful from the fact that he does not throw away his uniforms. He keeps them uniforms every year. His uniform, he makes a new set of uniforms, is it not? Now, when he makes a new set of uniforms, he does not just discard his old uniform. Then what does he do? He wraps them up in brown paper and keeps it properly preserved below the, below his wardrobe. Do you understand? What does he do with his old uniforms? He does not discard, he does not discard, discard, he does not discard, does not throw away. He does not discard his old uniform, then what does he do with them? 
what he does is that he wraps them up very nicely in brown paper and keeps them all under the wardrobe clear so it shows that he is a very meticulous person he is very proud of his office he is very proud of the job he holds uh, he and he wears his uniform like a badge of honor for him it is the sign of his office and when he does not wear his uniform he feels insufficiently clad uh, when he does not wear his uniform it, he, he feels that he is not wearing something a piece of his clo clothing is missing do you get that get the point so that is mr foreman now last day we saw that one day foreman was called uh, he was he was stopped in his tracks and asked to meet the vicar the new vicar that is the priest the new vicar vicar is the priest the vicar called foreman and asked him to that he wanted to vicar wanted to have a chat with foreman vicar wanted to have a talk with foreman so when he was having the talk two more people were present there the two church wardens were also present there and what the vicar said was really very disturbing remember as i said saint peter's church is a church where top class people the elite people the aristocratic people go to worship in that church there is a verger who does not know how to read and write it's a big thing now the vicar said this confronted foreman and said you don't know how to read and write he said no he says no in a very very as a, as if it doesn't matter and he says in fact so so what i've been the verger i've done my duty and i have never been lax in my duty so even if i don't know how to read and write what is the harm so the vicar says but don't you think you don't know how to read and write it could be a problem suddenly some accident or some kind of an emergency would occur because of your illiteracy he doesn't pay any heed to it the church wardens asked him but didn't you ever try to learn and the church wardens also don't know it this is a fact that they learned then so they said don't didn't you ever try to learn he says yeah some when i entered service and he entered service at the age of 12 he started working as he started working as a page boy in the house of a merchant prince he started his work at the age of 12 starting as a page boy in the house of a merchant prince so this is what since then he started working and he says yeah at one time a cook tried to teach me but i he 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 is least bothered about reading and writing so what did the new vicar do the new vicar gave him 3 months time he said i'm giving you and how did the new vicar speak to him he is the boss remember he is his boss he did not tell him hey, you don't know how to read and write no he did not be like that he was not like that what he said he said mr foreman we acknowledge that you have served this church for a pretty long time and you have served the church very dutifully we acknowledge it but you see i'm giving you 3 months time to learn how to read and write he did not tell him to write an encyclopedia he just told him hey, i give you 3 months time start picking up how to read and write become literate hmm? if you can't do that then we will have no options and what does he say he says i can't learn anything new i'm going the vicar had given him time of 3 months he could have tried and failed but he was not even ready to try he was not even ready to try is not in the mood to give it a shot he was ready to quit then to read and write and then he quits his job and walks away from the church this much we had studied the previous day i will take a pause here and i will ask you some questions let us discuss if you were in the class it would have been fun but unfortunately because of this covid pandemic we are having to do this through this medium but as i speak to you when i ask you a question 
just think in your mind assume that you are inside the class imagine you are in my class and we are talking all right so up to this much you have heard the story right what do you think what kind of a person is edward albert foreman albert uh, foreman is a verger he has served the church for 16 long years he seems to be a very careful person one who is very proud of his job and his uniform but at the same time here is a person who is not even ready to start reading and writing at one point somebody asks him you don't know how to read and write you never felt any curiosity is it curiosity for what for reading the news he says oh, i don't read the newspapers so it has not harmed me in any way i'm quite good and i can hear the news from people that's enough for me he is so very callous about he does not have he does not give any any importance to reading and writing all right then there is this he hates the new vicar he hates his boss foreman hates his boss why does he hate his boss he hates his boss because he thinks that his new boss this boss who who spoke to him his age is about 40 he comes from the east east end of london east end of london the area of london and this man is very serious and albert says that he's a very nagging person he wants to have his finger in every pie that's the exactly what he feels about his boss this man he wants to have his finger in everything poking nature then whom did he like he liked his former boss the old boss this is the new one and the old one what was the old one like the old one was a old fashioned person a purane zamane ka purane khayalaton ka purane khayalaton ka insaan tha wo old old school this expression remember when you hear somebody saying oh he is an old school guy it doesn't mean that oh there is a school which is old and old school no no old school means purane khayalaton ka insaan old school so he is of the old school he is a very easy going man he is a very easy going man he doesn't want much change doesn't want much change jo jaisa hai waisa rehne do old one old boss previous boss and he used to preach very leisurely bade aaram se when he conducted the church sessions bade hi aaram se he used to conduct the sessions okay in the church as they conduct uh, they, he he conducts the session in the church in a very leisurely aaram se comfortably in a silvery voice but he is in contrast the new person he is not very old and he is a very he is an old school person and an old elderly fellow in comparison he is a younger person of the newer generation all right then he is very serious about everything he is also very meticulous about everything this man the new one okay and nothing escapes his notice okay the, he was a man who did not love change but this was a man who wanted to change things if it was necessary change if needed if anything is needed to be changed change it all right he did not he wanted everything to be in order the new one so let's look at it again how was the old boss like the old boss was an elderly person he was easy going chalo theek hai chalne do he did not like much change jo jaisa hai rehne do and he was very leisurely and he also did not mind he also didn't mind going out he used to dine out with his fashionable worshippers who came there he didn't mind chalo bhaiya dinner pe chalte hain no problem all right and he he did not have this kind of habits what was he he was younger he was very serious he was ready to change things if it it was necessary to change it now i told you the qualities of both these persons now foreman hates this man what do you think is he justified in his hatred he thinks that this man is very poking if you read the story and if you read how he behaves with foreman you will see 
that if he was if he were a poking person or a very bossy person he could have spoken to foreman very rudely but he did not he did not he did not speak to foreman rudely at all he patiently heard him he thanked foreman for his long years of service he just said that you are not literate you must try to learn how to read and write and he also gave foreman 3 months time it's not like he's a very bossy person he is ready to give you time it is foreman who did not accept that offer and in a half in a half you understand hmm nahi karna that kind of an attitude he quit the job now is foreman justified in hating the new vicar kya foreman jo in vicar ko jo pasand nahi karte the क्या इस नापसंदी के पीछे जो कारण है इज इट जस्टिफाइड क्या वो ठीक है क्या वो सही है इज इट इज इट जस्टिफाइड नो इट्स नॉट जस्टिफाइड इट्स नॉट जस्टिफाइड देन देन वॉट देन इट टेल्स अ समथिंग अबाउट फोर मैन इट टेल्स अ समथिंग अबाउट हिम वॉट काम चोर है ही थिंक्स ही थिंक्स फोर मैन थिंक्स यू सी if you think that you are a very great person that does not make you great what others say about you you are what others say about you the whole day if you beat the drum and say i am very serious i am very serious that won't do if your friends think that oh he or she oh they're not serious at all that you are that is it not our verger our uh, foreman he thinks he's very serious he thinks that he's doing an excellent job but whether he's doing an excellent job or not is a matter to be judged by others is it not if i become my own judge if i think oh i'm taking a very good class here no no i can try to take a very good class i can try my level best to take a good class but my judge uh, you, the my listeners my watchers my students they will have to judge me is it not if i keep on drumming up about myself the whole day that doesn't change things does it same with the same with foreman he thinks he is very excellent in his job is impeccable irreproachable 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 mane it's like you do something and i can't find a fault in what you do that is irreproachable he thinks that he has an irreproachable way of working but that may not be true you see he never he has become the verger of a very important church he doesn't know how to read and write this foreman is a very interesting character very complex character you see now you learned about his hatred for the new vicar i will tell you something very funny now you will enjoy it you will enjoy it what is funny when foreman loses his job he walks out of the church in anger he quit the job after some time he realizes are ye maine kya kar diya ye kya kar diya maine i am without job ab mujhe khilayega kaun how am i to pay my bills he has saved some money but that money is not enough to last him his whole life so now what to do where he has no job so he is suddenly gripped by an urge to smoke what happened he is in a lot of tension and he is he is suddenly gripped by the urge to smoke and there he says the author makes remarks very nicely he says uh, our foreman does not smoke he is a total non smoker and a total abstainer <coughs> sorry what does the word abstainer mean abstainer abstainer comes from the word abstain abstain means to stay away from anything but when you say he is an abstainer it automatically means that he is a non drinker he is a non drinker he does not drink drink what water not water alcohol he is a non drinker what have i written non drinker he does not drink now try and understand this point it's a very funny point he says no 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 author says no 
our edward albert foreman he does not smoke huh? but sometimes when he is in anxiety he smokes oh he is a total non drinker na huh? sharab nahi peeta but kabhi kabhi dinner ke sath thoda beer chalta hai he is a non drinker huh? he is a non drinker it's not he's not so what do you find out about foreman he is not very honest about his personality are you getting the point or not you are saying no 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 you see i don't smoke sometimes when i get tension every smoker smokes when he gets a little tension all right and i don't drink i don't mind a little beer with dinner oh you don't drink then what were you doing so this is what he is he say anyway he is gripped by this urge to smoke so he searches the street the church street he goes up looking for a shop dukan to hai par jo dhoond raha hai wo nahi hai kya dhoond raha hai what is he searching for gold flakes you know what are gold flakes right gold flakes are a brand of cigarettes so he is looking for gold flakes but he doesn't get any cigarettes he goes home he's already he has lost his job and he goes home and suddenly he gets this idea he gets this idea very suddenly what is the idea i can't be the only person in that street looking for a cigarette i am sure many others have looked for cigarette as well so there is a deficiency of a shop that sells cigarette i am going to do it i am going to do it so he starts his first tobacco shop now from being the verger of st peter's church after he has lost his job he has opened started his own business and what is the business the business is he has become a tobacconist mane he sells tobacco plus he sells he is a news agent he has become a news agent that is he keeps newspapers here i must say you must salute foreman for his business acumen why what is the greatest business what is the best business do you think what is the best business if you think a little you will see the best business is that business where you don't have to go and tell people repeatedly please come and buy my product please come and buy my product if you can exploit the habits of people and if you can carve out a business from that you are the, you have done very good for example if you if 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 it's very easy to get rich you see in this world it is very easy to get rich it only depends upon your principles are you ready to sacrifice your principles in that church street where foreman did not find a single shop he found shops but no shop sold cigarettes he decided then that he would sell cigarettes and eventually in the story you will see he gets very 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 rich all right you will see it now what has he done you see the rest of them did not compromise with their principles but here is edward albert foreman the former verger of the church and he is about to start his new business and what is that business i was just telling you the best business idea is that business where you don't have to go and tell somebody okay come try this new product for example i sell cosmetics i will have to come on tv and tell you okay look this is like me this and that if you ek bar lagaoge char hafton mein gora ban jaoge then i have to you know convince you into believing that it is true most of the things that the advertisements tell you are anyway false but look at a person who sells cigarettes he doesn't have to go and tell anybody anything nothing is needed how many cigarette advertisements do you see in your on your tv none at all but do you find any dearth of smokers no why it is his habit you don't have to go and tell him to buy out of habit out of addiction out of compulsion he will buy he will buy news is similarly something like that you see nowadays you don't do it but only a few years ago or even now you might find some people they still have that habit of reading a newspaper and early in the morning the first thing they look for is a newspaper a cup chai or akhbar newspaper it, it 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 also becomes an addiction to know curiosity to know this curiosity is a positive curiosity but that curiosity is a bad curiosity 
So anyway, look at look at his business acumen. He has been able to mold their own habits, their own addictions into a profitable business for himself. So whatever you tell Foreman, he is definitely a successful businessman. And true, he was a successful businessman. He became a successful businessman. In 10 years, he got, you know, he set up 10 shops at different corners of London and became a very, very prosperous tobacco agent, to tobacconist, and selling tobaccos and a newspaper agent. One day he goes to the bank. A business kar raha hai, to paisa bhi aega. A paisa aega, to jama karne bank mein bhi jana padega. To gaya, ek din, one day he goes to the bank. When he goes to the bank and tries to deposit the money, the bank manager calls him now. Says, Mr. Foreman, can I have a word with you, please? He says, what? He says, do you know how much money is there in your account? He says, I don't know the exact figure, but I know roughly. Why? Imagine, he says, I don't know exactly how much is, it, is there in my account, but I roughly know how much there is. He says, apart from the money you deposited today, apart from the money you deposited today, you have amassed 30,000 pounds in your account. Uh, you have deposited that much amount in your account. That, that, that information you will get it here uh, on page number uh, 10 of your book if you read. So he says, apart from the money that you deposited today, you have saved a little over, a little more than 30,000 pounds for those days 30,000 pounds was a lot of money, lot of money. So he says, oh, maybe. He says, this much money, so much money, it's not wise to keep it idle in, an, in a savings account. I would suggest that you invest your money. So he says, invest my money? He says, yeah, in stocks and all these things. He says, okay, I could, but then I don't know. Oh, he says, you know, you have to invest in stocks and I've got some gold standard stocks for you. You can invest in that. So much money you cannot keep it idling in a uh, safety bank account. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, not safety, uh, in, in a savings bank account. So, and the manager says, I'll send you the offer documents tomorrow. You read and then you sign the papers. Just the rest we shall do for you. He says, read, read what? I don't know how to read and write. The bank manager was shocked. He says, you don't know how to read and write? No. My dear, if you don't know how to read and write and you have been able to earn so much of money, what would you have done if you would know how to read and write? What is he asking? That without reading and writing, you have spent so much money, so you have spent so much money, so how much money you spend? Very nice reply that he gives. He tells the bank manager, अगर पढ़ना लिखना आता, if I if I were literate, तो मैं क्या बन के रह जाता? Correct. कुछ नहीं, बस एक बढ़जर बन के रहता. Is it not? If he knew how to read and write, he would have saved his job. He would have stayed the बढ़जर and that would be it. Would he would he actually be able to make thirty thousand pounds? No. So, this is a very this is the end of the story. It is an interesting story. Uh, I have tried to tell you a little in deep about the character in the middle of today's discussion. Uh, hopefully we will get another opportunity when we shall revise this chapter again. You will soon be given your notes on this chapter and notes on each of the chapters will be given to you. Please read those notes, go through this and also read the book today. Right after you listen to the explanation, I would suggest listen to the read the book once, then listen to the explanation and then read the book. Please follow a good dictionary, look up every word that you don't know and be thorough with your chapter. For today, this is it for me. Thank you very much for watching.